we're gonna go a little deeper with the 3080. Hey guys, welcome to Frame Chasers. Uh, the place where we do whatever possible to get the most performance we can out of the hardware that we have. I feel like I have to say that like every single video now because as new people come in, I, I think people keep getting the wrong impression about what this channel is about. Um, again, this channel is about the fastest. M making whatever we have the fastest it can be. Buying whatever the fastest is. The, just, I need to just like change my slogan to the fastest. That's all I give a shit about. Like, Jesus. And on our journey to the fastest. Um, so, you know, with the whole capacitor debacle, right? Um, with the whole 3000 series capacitor thing, blah, blah, blah. It takes somebody who wants the fastest to look at any negative and turn it into their positive, right? So what do most people do when the capacitor crash thing happened? They bitch, they whine, you know, the usual story. 99% of the people are going to bitch and whine about how their shit doesn't work, right? What do frame chasers do? We do research on the topic and try and find our own fix and make our own shit work, right? So uh, after that whole thing happened, I did a whole bunch of research on capacitors, ESR values, what what is actually on the back of those cards, what each manufacturer is using for uh, microfarad uh, values on each of those, uh, you know, rigs, I want to say. Sorry, banks. Banks is the word I want to say. And I noticed that the, the EVGA XE3 one I, I don't want to say EVGA cheaped out, but they're using 27 microfarad MLCCs and 270 SP caps, right? And that's like the bare minimum of the NVIDIA spec, like bare, bare, bare minimum, right? So the interesting thing is, even though they cheaped out on those capacitors to that degree, my card is still clocked to 2190 megahertz locked at 1.1 volt, right? Like... I'm hitting 2.2 here, no problems, no, no crashes. 2205 does crash, but um, 2190, zero crashes at all. So upon doing some research, I ended up looking at and ordering a shit ton of capacitors. The, holy crap, I did not know capacitors were this expensive, like holy shit. These ones here, I'm gonna try and focus it, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it. Oh, wrong side, sorry, hang on. Uh. Yeah, I don't think the camera is going to focus that. These ones are 470 microfarad. Um, I don't remember the ESR rating, but these were like a dollar fifty each. It's it was insane. How many do I have here? Twenty. Like, I cannot believe how expensive these capacitors were. Like, no wonder they're using such shitty ones on these cards, right? Like, imagine um, six SP caps per card, or five, I should say times a dollar fifty versus like the ten the ten cent ones they used right then we also got i also ordered um 47 microfarad mlcc caps um these ones i don't remember what these ones cost they weren't they actually were not as bad as these ones but i mean if you tally up 10 of these it's more expensive than one of these right that's why uh, it makes sense why they use so many of these, but it doesn't mean we can't double up on these, right? So what I'm going to be doing in this video actually is something I've never done before. I'm going to attempt to cap mod my card, because why not? The, the warranty's out the fucking window now anyway. So if you actually look at the XE3, this is the back here, right? Um, uh, let me, actually, you know what? Let me, let me, uh... I'm actually going to paste this into paint so I can show you. Um, what I'm going to be doing... So, you know how DeBauer already kind of did this video where he took all of these and replaced them with MLCC banks? I think he got like 30 megahertz out of it. It wasn't that big of a deal. But what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to take those $1.50... SP caps, the four, the 470 microfarad ones, and I'm going to solder them over top of the ones that are already there. Um, I'm pretty much just going to be putting them in parallel. So all we're doing is decreasing the ESR 
and increasing the capacitance, like the total storage capacity, right? Um, that's literally all we're doing. And then for these tiny ones here, I'm going to be doing the exact same thing. I'm going to solder those 47 microfarad MLCCs right over top of these. And, um, and also when you put all those in parallel, it reduces ESR at the same time. So what does this mean exactly? Well, honestly, I don't know. I, I, yeah, I've never done this before. I don't even know if I'll be able to even solder these tiny ones. Like this is going to require some, um, some finesse. So this is going to be like, this is like the highest risk with the lowest reward mod that you can do. Like, like, uh, like I would assume maybe at best I'd be able to get to 20, 22, 20 megahertz. Maybe like I have no idea. So I mean, I, I, maybe it won't do anything. Like I have no idea, but like, it, it, the, the, that's what we're all about. Like, but like, like this, this is one of those mods where I would literally not recommend it to anybody, even if you are a frame chaser, because like, what, like, what's the point of 20, like, like 20 megahertz is not going to make it a FPS difference most of the time anyway. Right. But this is more just for my curiosity sake. I want to know what the hell happens. So, uh, Let's get the card. Let's try soldering. See what happens. Damn, now that I'm, uh, now that I'm here, this seemed like a better idea on paper than it does in person. These, these capacitors are so tight together. I don't know how I'm going to be able to actually, like, like, I might be able to do one bank of them. But then I don't know how I'm gonna get the my 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 soldering iron in there on the other side after I finish one side, right? Um, yeah, this is gonna be it's gonna be complicated. I'm let's uh, I'm just gonna make this. I'm gonna I'm gonna fast forward the video from here because I don't know what's gonna happen. But uh, yeah, wish me luck. Wish me luck. <laughs> Look at that. I got all of the MLCCs done here. This is the first bank. You can, uh, you can, you can, uh, you can tell the first one I did is like on like a 40 degree angle with like a glob and shit. But like you can see like as I slowly started doing them, they started getting straighter and straighter and better and better. But uh, yeah, it looks like, it looks like this is, this first part was successful. They all... None of them are touching each other. They're all soldered on the in and out. And, uh, yeah, that wasn't as bad as I thought it was. It took about 30 minutes, 30 minutes to do this. So, step number two, let's do these six big ones. This should not be nearly as difficult or as time-consuming, but let's do one, and then uh, I'll fast-forward the other four there. Nah, guys, I'm sorry. I'm gonna have to bail on the bigger ones. I actually almost screwed this up and, like, and, like, I almost had a point of no return here, but my soldering iron here isn't fine enough and hot enough to actually get in there and like solder the board down without actually touching all these capacitors around here for these bigger ones. Um, if, if the solder actually came up all the way over the plastic, I would be able to, but having to get my needle all the way down and like under, you know what I mean? Uh, it's just, like, look how fat this bitch is. I, I can't, like, I can't, uh, like, maybe a, maybe a, a different time I'll be able to do it. If I get, if I order maybe some kind of really, really fine soldering iron. But, yeah, I took this one off. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and test it anyway. We still added, um, 470 microfarads on top, right? So that's... It's pretty much like adding a seventh bank of capacitors over here. I mean, it's, it's still a worthy test. Let's see what happens, right? But in the meantime, doing these fat ones right now is too risky for me. Gonna have to bail on those. But maybe in a future date if I get a different iron. But anyway, all right. Let's throw her back together. 
and see what it does anyway. So I've actually been playing with this for a while now, and uh, it actually, like the results are actually quite a bit better than I thought they were. So like, check this out. Oh, I'm just running a time spy right now. I used to, it used to crash at 2190, but now I can set it to 2150 on 1.1 volt here. And it will, it obviously settles at a lower frequency and a benchmark, but at 1080p, I can actually get to, to um, 2220 in 1080p gaming now. So I actually went up two bins, no, three bins. Wait, is that three bins? 2190, 2205, two bins, two bins. So it actually went up two bins here, which is pretty damn successful for that one bank. So Time Spy is just loading up here and check this out. And I've been testing this for like a few hours now, so like, um, this is like 100% stable here. Yeah, 2220 is stable now. But you see how it went down to 2205 in Time Spy, so it's actually just pulling a little bit too much power. But if I, well, I'll run Warzone after this, and it'll be stable in uh, 2220, right? So I would say it, it went up one speed bin in like 4K gaming, really heavy loaded gaming. And it went up two speed bins in 1080p. Let me, uh, let me just cancel this and load up Warzone here quickly. So let's go into a quick game here. I should be able to pull it up over top. Uh, Battle Royale practice. Let's see if I can get Afterburner over top. There we go, perfect. Now just watch, it'll just sit here the whole time. Perfectly stable. So yeah, I would say super successful. It like it was totally worth it for 1080p or like two actual speed bins. Here we go. Yeah, check that out. 260 FPS, 1.1 volt, 220 megahertz, baby. That was totally worth it. Huge success now. That so I guess like. Like, would I do this on my Strix? On my th yeah, I think I would. I think I will. This was actually like, like, hell yeah, dude. This was fucking awesome. All right, let's go back. Oh yeah, look at look at that 320 FPS, baby. Oh yeah, A AMD fanboys weep. They weep. Not bad. Yeah, that worked really well. Uh, keep in mind that those capacitors that I bought, the like even the, the big ones and the small ones, were literally like the most expensive, lowest ESR capacitors that you could, like the quality of those capacitors was way higher than the ones that were actually on the XC3. So I added, by, by soldering those 10 little ones, I added 470 microfarads of capacitance which is like having an extra one and a half banks of capacitors so it's, it's like having instead of six of them it's like having five fat ones and two and a half small like the mlcc ones right so if you think about it in that context it, it makes sense why the performance gain was that large uh, even without doing the other five of them, right? So, like, I would assume that is probably diminishing returns from that point, where maybe if I did the other five of them, maybe one more speed bin or nothing. But I'm gonna I'm gonna table that for now. I'm actually gonna order a really fine, super super fine um, soldering needle, and then I'm maybe maybe I'll revisit this when I do liquid metal on it at the same time, just to see if I can. But um, yeah, my my soldering head was way too fat to actually get in there for those big ones. But like, I, I have like a hundred more of those small MLCCs though. I'm definitely, if I do ruin the warranty on my Strix 3090, I'm going to go and do every single one on my Strix now. That like, it worked so incredibly well for that one bank. Like two speed bins? That's, that's 30 megahertz, man. That's, you know what I mean? Worth it if you're good at soldering and you're okay modding your card. 100% not, like, you're better off just shunt modding it. You know what I mean? Or putting, a, like, or you're, you'll get more speed if you just put a water block on it. Something that won't fuck your warranty up, right? But, um, if you're interested, I could, 
I have the part numbers of these capacitors. I can post it up for you guys. For you really extreme, um, like really extreme modders. Like I, I pretty much just copied all of these parts off of uh, Build Zoid's channel. Um, like, but, like he uses some really intense shit too. So I'm just like, oh, I'll just copy that and I'll just buy those, right? And yeah, but they, he wasn't kidding when he said that he just cap mods all of his cars. Like the performance gains are there to be had friends. They, it is there, it is there. Anyway, guys, I hope you learned something. I sure as hell did. I never in a million years thought that just soldering 10 little capacitors would get you 30 megahertz higher on your, on your card. Uh, that, that kind of opens up a whole new can of worms for me a little bit. What if I, what if I cap a mod the GDDR6, the 6X modules too? Will those clock higher? What if I, like, what if I, like, like, where does the cap modding end? You know what I mean? Like, we're like, 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 if you ever see one of Buildzoid's like piece, like cap modded cards, he has caps all over the damn thing, dude. Like the thing is littered in caps. So like. Maybe, maybe that, maybe that train just never ends with, with how many caps you can add. You know what I mean? It's, it's like a dangerous road to go down maybe. But, um, yeah, I hope you learned something. Uh, if you like the content, hit that subscribe button, do all that YouTube SEO stuff. Like, share, subscribe, comment down below what you thought of this. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you guys in the next one. Talk to you later.